Hello, welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. Today, we turn the spotlight on the role of the Election Commission in the run up to the Lok Sabha polls. Apart from ensuring free and fair elections, one of its other big mandate is to ensure a key level playing field for all parties during the campaigning season. The recent arrest of Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal in a liquor policy related probe coming weeks ahead of the general election has raised eyebrows, with several opposition parties alleging that the central agencies were acting at the ruling parties behest. The Election Commission, which also acts as a third empire during the election, had in 2019 issued an advisory to the Revenue Secretary strongly advising that the enforcement actions during the election period should be absolutely neutral, impartial and non-discriminatory. The neutrality of the central agencies has come under a cloud of doubt for the following reasons. As per a report by the Indian Express, enforcement probes against a number of politicians have been put in cold storage after they switched over to the BJP over the last few years. Yes, uh, this indeed is a big political story. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi filing his nomination papers from Kerala's Vayanar today. The constituency goes to polls in phase two of the 26th of April. A sitting MP, Gandhi had won the 2019 Lok Sabha contest, defeating his closest rival from the CPI by over 4 lakh votes. This time, however, the stage is set for a three-way battle with the BJP entering the electoral fray as well. Gandhi conducted a roadshow ahead of his nomination filing. He was accompanied by his sister Priyanka Gandhi Vadra and senior Congress leaders. Vayanad's CPI candidate Annie Raja also filed her nomination. Kerala Chief Minister Vijayan had earlier hit out at Gandhi for putting up his candidature against the left. K. Surendran is the BJP candidate. Rahul Gandhi also addressed his constituency, saying he doesn't treat the constituency as an electorate, but like his family. We do from all families. I have received love and affection. I have learned so much from my brothers, my sisters. It has been an honor for me to be your member of parliament. I don't treat you and think of you like an electorate. I treat you and think of you the same way I think of my little sister Priyanka over here. Joining me now is Congress spokesperson Swati Chandrasekhar, BJP spokesperson Anuja Kapoor and Am Aadmi Party spokesperson Shubh Balotra. Uh, Anuja Kapoor, can, if I can come to you first, a lot of questions coming in for the BJP and uh, the government. In the Indian Express today, there was a report that since 2014, 25 opposition leaders facing corruption probes have crossed over to the BJP. 23 of them got reprieved. Uh, S.Y. Qureshi, the former election commissioner, also raising concerns that if ED, CBI, the IT department go ahead, freeze accounts, carry out raids, arrest leaders during the poll campaign, this causes irreparable damage to the poll process. How do you respond to this? Jai Shri Ram, Parikshaji, and uh, good evening to my panel. The this is an allegation. So I think this should be, first of all, very clear. This is an allegation. How does BJP put a role in this forward? When the courts, the MM courts, quash the case or close the case, how is it when there is nothing from the BJP putting any kind of an affidavit, any kind of an application in furtherance of that case? How is it possible that when we are asking from an ED's probe in Congress time, when the allegations has been started, the prosecutrix from the Congress does not provide any papers in further. So when there is in furtherance, when we see, when the MM courts are giving the closure reports, and we see around, if we see in Pratap Sarnik, the closure report was given by EOW, not by the ED. If we see in Hemant Biswa Sharma, the case is still open and it is not closed. It has not closed. If we see in Hassan Mushrif, again we see it is he was being protected by the court because he approached the courts and he was being given the interim relief. He was given the protection. But and Anuja if, Kapoor, if doesn't, this, Singh, doesn't this how, raise how the does, question how does, when, no, whether you say the probe is open or not, 
or you say that this is a legal process in court, but it shows that the BJP, when it comes to electoral victory, when it comes to jeetne ki sambhavna, is open to anyone and everyone, no matter what the credentials might be, whether they might be a criminal probe or not. The elections are fair, the elections are just, the votes are being given by the people, not by the election parties. I don't know what's wrong and where it is wrong. The EDs are doing their jobs. I have said it many times. BJP is the party of JP Nadda. How does the BJP get involved in CBI and ED? It is not a cage parrot here. I'm sorry. It has an open stream like we see in Indian Air Force. During that time, it used to carry Congress. People used to cut cake. In their, in, their, in their planes. Now, Indian Air Force, you have seen and you will abide with us. What is the defense we are in? The defense system is strong because the Indian okay, Army let has me get in a reactions. full stand. So, pa Parikshit, All I, right. I think let we, me get in people reactions are very now. clear on this. Okay. Anuja Kapoor, let me get in reactions now from Shubh Malhotra of the Amadi Party and also the Congress spokesperson here. Uh, Shubh Malhotra, let me ask you, how does the release of Sanjay Singh helped the Ahmadi Party. We believe that there was a press conference scheduled at 4 p.m. That has been delayed to later this evening. But uh, the Enforcement Directorate did not object to the bail in the Supreme Court. The SC went on to say that there is no money trail here. Nothing has been found so far. What's going to be the Ahmadi Party's next move now? Well, uh, I think uh, the first thing that this proves is that uh, this bail that came through proves is, you know, Sanjay Singh is the first leader in all of 10 years of Modi government to have been given bail in a case by ED without actually joining the Bharatiya Janta Party. So, you know, that in itself says a lot and with respect to, says a lot in connection to uh, the uh, this particular article I have uh, from uh, Indian Express that has done this expose that how uh, the BJP's washing machine functions against opposition leaders who uh, just joined BJP and, uh, you know, Praful Patel, we know the case has been closed. Chagan Bujwal, the file has been lost, so the case has been closed. Ajit Pawar joined BJP and after that, Pawar Chakki Pising used to be said about him by Devendra Fadnavis, but then he joined BJP again, he went to the washing machine and now he's sitting as the head of uh, Maharashtra. So, you know, all of these things are very evident that uh, there is a proper persecution in place. Now, with mm. respect to uh, uh, what uh, the proper persecution of non-BJP governments in place, and that is uh, particularly in the forefront with respect to the so-called liquor scam, because it is just allegations and this bail of uh, Sanjay Singh and what you're talking about with respect to uh, ED not contesting bail. See, the courts were very clear yesterday that if you are going to contest the bail, then you are going to have to present evidence that he actually is involved. And that is why ED was not able to contest the bail because they do not have any evidence. They could not present any evidence against Sanjay Singh in the liquor gate case. And the same order operandi uh, with, uh, you know, the uh, witness, uh, uh, the first the kingpin then becomes witness and gives 10 statements saying that I do not know Sanjay Singh. I have not had any transactions with him. And 11th statement, he says that, yes, I mean, he buckles basically under ED's pressure and says that, yes, uh, you know, now I'm going to incriminate him because I want to get free from jail. That is what has happened. And in any case, what the courts have done yesterday mm. is basically in uh, uh, under PFLA. Okay. It's very, very difficult to get a bail. I, so I'll, have to hold, I'll have to been... hold you on for a moment. Let me get in. Let me quickly get in the Congress spokesperson before we wrap because uh, we are also getting an exclusive interaction with Mr. S.Y. Qureshi. He will be joining us uh, in a little while from now. But let me go across to the Congress spokesperson, Swati Chandrasekhar. Today, Rahul Gandhi filed his nomination from Bayanad, but it seems that uh, some of uh, the opposition leaders are not happy with it. The CPI leader, D. Raja, a short while back said that nobody understands why is he contesting the election from Bayanad. And the BJP is also going to make this fight very tough. Smriti Irani is going to be accompanying the state BJP president, uh, Surendran, when he files his nomination. And uh, the party is saying that if Rahul Gandhi wins Bayanad again, then he will make sure there is no development in the constituency just the way things were in Amiti. So here the BJP is going to make it very tough for Rahul Gandhi in Bayanad as well. And some of the other opposition uh, allies of the Congress not happy with this decision as well. 
परीक्षित नमस्कार भारत माता की जय आई सो विश बीजेपी ऑल्सो टेक दिस लाइन इंस्टेड ऑफ ऑल द टाइम टेलिंग श्री राम की जय इट्स ऑल्सो बेटर दैट बीजेपी टेक्स भारत माता की जय ऑल्सो first thing uh, you mentioned about the debate was on uh, ed and id of course we'll come to that later i take the question that is posed to me rahul gandhi contesting from wynad this is a democratic uh, country parikshit so any leader has the right to contest from any of the constituencies that is given under the constitution so point number 1 and uh, with respect to amiti we also understand that in the past indira gandhi had lost elections in the past big leaders from uh, bjp had lost elections so this is a game of democracy this is a game of voting and i think we should respect whatever the decision that was given or the mandate that was given by the people but that doesn't mean that the doors of amiti or raibareli or uttar pradesh is closed for congress and with respect to wynad rahul gandhi contesting from wynad let me tell you something very clearly especially after rahul gandhi contesting from wynad i want to give you the data of the development that he has actually made in the constituencies with respect to a new institution coming to the state to uh, uh maintaining uh, the roads and uh, other things he has actually excelled in his duty this is something which is very clear i am sure that bjp might uh, oppose me telling that this is a state subject and a central subject as an mp right from utilizing his mp lacs he has done his duty very well especially okay. from constituency right. that he has been representing and and okay. one more thing you also right. mentioned swati Iran swati i'll request you to hold on i'll come back to you i'll come back to you in just a bit we have to take a break at this point when we return we'll go across to mr sy qureshi for a one 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 on one conversation and then we will return to all our guests for a closing comment uh we are taking a break but don't go anywhere a conversation with sy qureshi the former election chief election commissioner coming up Welcome back you watching New Center today we turn the spotlight on the role of the election commission in the run up to the Lok Sabha election apart from ensuring free and fair polls one of its other big mandates is to ensure a key level playing field for all parties ahead of the campaigning season joining us now to take this conversation forward is SY Qureshi former chief election commissioner Mr Qureshi thank you very much for joining us do you feel the manner in which this election is taking place there are countries like the united states germany the united nations they have raised questions about the poll process about the arrest of leaders is this a is this a level playing field that we're working in according to you mr kureshi well there are two different issues uh, how the world is looking at us uh, which is a different matter uh, but whether uh, level playing field is uh, being observed and how important it is i would like to say that level playing field is sacrosanct and election commission has to enforce that whatever it takes because that is uh, the basic thing about elections and which is why there are so many in the provision the model code itself has a the exclusive chapter dedicated to uh, the party in power it puts restrictions all kinds of restrictions on the party in power to ensure that the incumbency advantage which the ruling party has is neutralized you know if just to give an example no minister can travel in the office staff car uh, their flags uh, disappear their beacon on their the, uh, cars are taken away uh, um, the top leaders uh, for photographs and posters and hoarding they are removed uh, from public places so the, the that the whole purpose is level playing field and uh, whatever is coming in the way election commission has to take notice of it Right. Uh, the powers of the ED, the CBI, 
the IT department at this point, a lot of political parties have been saying that their accounts are being frozen, especially uh, the Congress party, and this affects their campaigning, the amounts they can allot to particular candidates. Uh, raids taking place, key candidates continuing to be in jail. This affects uh, the election for the opposition. Do you feel the ED has the powers to advise or tell the Enforcement Directorate or the IT department to take permission or at least inform the uh, EC before taking any action? Well, not just inform the EC, surely has the power to even stop them. In fact, in 2019, they had advised the ED to uh, uh, ensure that they do not uh, uh, disturb the level playing field. And now ED, uh, they may have some cases, IT, case, uh, IT cases. These cases have been going on for months and years. And why the hell can't they wait for two more months? So obviously, the uh, prima facie, now you're... If you debar a senior leader, imagine the top leader of our country debarred from from campaigning for one day. How much uh, adverse effect does it have? So here, uh, the leaders were put in jail, which could have waited. Uh, the parties were funds frozen for uh, for 39 year old case and a seven year old case, which could have waited. They, they cannot. How will they campaign? So you are uh, throttling their campaign. Physically and financially, it is definitely not acceptable. And the election commission can surely question them. Why? Why? The first question they have to ask, why can't it be? They're not terrorists. Only in the case of national security, only in the case of terrorists, well, they, they'll run away. You have to take prompt action now, right now. Something which has been going on for year, for months and years. Suddenly, uh, you realize that hmm. it is inevitable and you, you must uh, uh, get hold of them, their account and their persons. Uh, I, I think it is highly objectionable. Right. Mr. Qureshi, we have seen the Congress uh, and different political parties appeal before the Election Commission to unfreeze these accounts, release political leaders, stop investigations by ED and IT department at this point in time. Uh, what are the powers that the Election Commission, that it can exercise when it gets pleas of these kinds? No, it will not say that the, the, uh, that the stop all investigations or free, uh, unfreeze the account. Uh, they will only say that the, the, do not take precipitate action now. If some inquiry has been going on, let it go on, but uh, please take it up after the elections are over. After all, you have to see whether heavens are falling. Hmm. If you do not uh, freeze the account, what heavens will hmm. fall? And if you do not arrest uh, the leaders, what heavens will fall in those two months? Uh, so uh, this is the question they have to answer. Hmm. We, Our rule that we follow in the, the election right. commission always, that something which can wait, must hmm. wait, and something which cannot wait, surely election hmm. commission is sensible enough to understand that and will uh, uh, permit it. Hmm. But in this case, something in the ongoing cases, uh, long drawn out uh, cases which have been going on and suddenly uh, they, uh, this is definitely affecting their uh, free and fair uh, uh, election uh, which requires level playing field. Mr. Qureshi, one more question that I have before we close. One more question. Uh, does this set a bad precedent for the future elections? And also, what do you think? As you've said, that in 2019... The Election Commission had uh, sent an advisory to the Revenue Department. You yourself have written in your article in the Indian Express that you had uh, sent a message to Manohar Parikar before the induction of a particular candidate just ahead of the election. Now, what do you think is stopping the Election Commission from acting right now? And what kind of a precedent does this set for future? Yeah, that, that's a very important question. Like you mentioned uh, Manohar Parikar's uh, case. In fact, that's a very beautiful uh, case to cite because uh, uh, when we heard that he's going to induct the candidate, it was a by-election, that he was going to induct the cabinet, that uh, candidate into his cabinet, which would have given that uh, candidate an uh, undue advantage uh, because the minister surely is likely to get more votes. We sent him an advisory and he called me up the next morning very angrily saying that this is his constitutional right. I said, surely it is your constitutional right. We are not questioning that. You can appoint anybody in the Council of Ministers anytime. However, 
there is a model code and if you see uh, respect its sanctity uh, if you can defer it by the two week three week uh, that will be nice and uh, i'm so respectful i salute him that he not only accepted the advice he came out with a great statement that i sacrifice my constitutional right uh, uh, on the, at the altar of uh, uh, the All right. Uh, we seem to be losing that audio with Mr. Qureshi. Mr. Qureshi, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for those conversation. I'd like to take that finally with Congress spokesperson Swati Chandrasekhar. Uh, Swati, you were speaking at that point and we had to interrupt. But you also wanted to make a larger point about the enforcement directorate, which uh, the uh, former chief election commissioner was also making. How has the action of the investigating agencies hampered the campaigning power of the Congress right now? Parikshit, uh, I think we need to get back to the data. From 2005 to 2023, about uh, 147 uh, political leaders have been questioned by uh, ED. And from 2014 to till date, 121 political leaders have been questioned out of that, and which there is not even a single BJP member in it. I seriously want to question uh, BJP who talks about democracy, who talks about, uh, who talks that they are the flag bearers of, uh, uh, you know, Naya Bharat. Please let us know that including one CM, a former chief minister, 14 former ministers, MPs, MLAs, and uh, seven TMC leaders, five from Congress, 26 persons from uh, uh, other opposition parties. Is there is there that BJP has not found a single BJP leader who is uh, at crime or ED has actually forgotten that uh, their uh, people who come into uh, BJP party, they, they all, uh, as uh, our uh, president mentioned very clearly, that uh, they become, uh, BJP is a washing machine and everybody who comes here uh, becomes so, so purified that uh, no uh, agencies, government agencies can actually question them or they are under this uh, purview. So something to mention very clearly, as okay. uh, Mr. very clearly mentioned, that this could have been hold or this could have been held, especially till elections. Why ED and IT is active only during elections? Why are they active during Lok Sabha elections? Why are they active during state elections? So what is this ED and IT uh, gets activated or what is this energy booster that they get, especially during elections? I think for the sake of democracy, for the sake of future all of this right, country, all right, all right, fine. Question. We've run out of time, Swati. I have to take one one quick question from all our spokespersons. Uh, Anuja, if you can uh, give us one quick remark before we wrap and then one remark to Shubh Malhotra. So quickly, I would like to uh, pick up the two questions which have been thrown at me. First of all, related to the Sanjay Singh. Sanjay Singh is not the one who has been acquitted. He's, he's, he's an accused and he's just on bail. And uh, the courts have said that this cannot be taken as a precedent. And this is a just an ED is giving you a concession on this. So I think this is a one remark I'm giving to the uh, Sanjay Singh uh, spokesperson. The second for the Congress, I'm sorry, whatever is happening with you, with you is the one which you deserve on your own cost. You should have paid your tax and the, pro uh, the uh, accounts are not been frozen. All your accounts are not been frozen. It's just this you have not shown the hidden money which you have been getting from all these sites. And one more thing for your Wynad. I would like to speak for SDPI, okay. the ones who are supporting you. You said that the PFI is not the ones you will ban. And in Karnataka, you talk about Bajrangdal. Now, the people who are coming up right. clean here on okay. the debates should not show their faces <laughs> when they talk about, about ED and so many things. So I am just trying to ban. Right. I'm just trying to put forward a case where the Congress are talking uh, should yeah. not be showing their so, face out here on yeah, the contents. Yeah. Yes, okay. Parikshit. All right, Anuja. Shubh Malhotra, one final comment to you. Go ahead. See, the agitation of the agitation of BJP is so palpable in the show also and on the ground also because you know they've been uh, now in recent times all the series of events that have happened they've been big blows to Bharatiya Janata Party starting from the India Alliance meeting that we had on 31st of March uh, which uh, gathered huge crowd against uh, the illegal arrest of CM Arvind Kejriwal and over there also the question was raised with respect I was listening to Mr. Qureshi very carefully and where the questions were raised with respect to the sanctity 
Security of Enforcement Directorate, when it is very clear that uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party, under whom the Enforcement Director, under whose government the Enforcement Directorate operates, has accepted 60 crores from uh, Sarat Chandra Reddy, who is the person who is the key witness against Sarvind Kejriwal and granted him bail after receiving these 60 crores. And especially pert in per pertinent is the fact that he was the kingpin, alleged kingpin on the, in the liquor scam. So I would like to ask the Bhatia Janta Party spokesperson sitting over here that why did they take those 60 crores from Sarat Chandra Reddy and convert him from being a kingpin and give him an easy way out after he became an approver okay. against We've Sarvind Kejriwal and granted the bail. We'll continue the this focus on CNBC TV in the days to come. But one just point that I'd like to quickly make, when it comes to Sanjay Singh, the Supreme Court also observed that this bail is being granted because the ED has not objected. This is not on merits and this is not a precedent for that matter. So the case continues and we have to see the case on merit itself uh, in the days to come. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of News Centre. More updates when we return.